pag nakikita niyo yung mga malalaking pincers na yun, pag crustaceans, malakustrakan, helipeds ang tawag. But if we're talking about scorpions, pedipalps. Magkamukha yung itsura, they perform the same functions, either defense or securing their prey. Pero iba yung pangalan. The universe does not give a fuck what name you give it. But your exams give a fuck. So please, try to remember it. We are diving deep in arthropod territory with the mostly aquatic arthropods and crustaceans. We are done with Miripoda. Wait, 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 wait. Balik, balik mo dito. And today, we are focusing on crustaceans. Now, just like myriapods and insects, because they do belong under subphyla mandibulata, they all have the mandibles. What distinguishes crustaceans from these other two subphyla is that they have two pairs of antennae. But when you observe closely, like crustaceans, myriapods, pareho naman silang maraming paa. Anong pinagkaiba nila? Their tagmara are more defined. Whereas for your myriapods, it's head and then trunk, which is like segment, 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 And also, crustaceans have biramous appendages. Si myriapods, kaksi insects, uniramous appendages sila. If you have a uniramous appendage, it's just coxa, trochanter, femur, tibia, tarsus, pretarsus, sunod-sunod lang sila. But for biramous appendages, you now have your coxa, and then your basis, and then together they're called the protopodite. From the protopodite, there are two branches, the endopodite and the exopodite. If this were like the central axis of the body, the endopodites are closer to the middle, whereas the exopodites are more outer. Kaya exo. May mga endite, epipodite. Nakakalito, ang daming podite, podite, podite. Dumadami lang talaga yung pangalan kasi nga syempre, dumami rin yung branches mo. We will be introducing you to four classes of crustaceans. There are a lot more, pero hindi na natin lalahatin. Ah, gusto nyo lahat? Lahat talaga? Lahat gusto nyo? Bakit? Ayaw nyo bang gumraduate? Hindi tayo matatapos nyan. Dami. Class branchio. Literally translates to the members of this group have epipodites that are broad and flattened and they serve as gas exchange structures. Can you imagine kung dun ka sa paa mo nag-i-inhale, exhale? Commonly, they are called water fleas. Gaya nangyari, yan nangyari. I need water. Water fleas. Water fleas. Copipoda, or the copipods, literally translates to or foot. Ang daming wala, no? No abdominal appendages, no gills, no eyes. Parang copipoda ba dapat tawag sa kanila? Baka dapat nopipoda. The typical copipod body plan includes the prosome and then the urosome. To be honest, these are just fancy names for the cephalothorax and abdomen. They just have different names, but in essence, they are still with the same tagmata. How can you give a compliment to a copipod? Just say, Urosome! Copipods are broadly grouped into cyclopoid, calanoid, and harpactacoid forms. You can mainly differentiate them based on how their body looks like overall. And you can also look at the length of the antennae for each of these different groups. Branchipoda and Copipoda are members of the zooplankton community and they are very, very important in aquatic ecosystems. They're the ones that eat the phytoplankton. The larger organisms eat them. A lot of the carbon that these phytoplankton are sucking up from the shit that we've been pumping into the atmosphere, that moves along the trophic levels of different animals and that's what gives everybody their carbon-based bodies. Arthropod ba talaga yan? But parang hindi. They were actually once mistaken for mollusks. All they really have are these cirri that are modified thoracic appendages. The abdomen is virtually absent and the head is very much reduced. Since these creatures are highly adapted for a sedentary lifestyle, you have no use for other appendages that help you move around. Having a reduction of body parts means that your body just spends less energy growing and maintaining itself, which is a plus. But the disadvantage of that is <laughs> you really can't move if you have to. You're a sitting duck. You are fucked if there is a predator. What is their workaround for that? Plates! The armor and like the parts of the armor if you have a helmet, greaves, bracers, gauntlets, chest plate. In the same way, the plates of these barnacles all have different names. Oh, more names to memorize! Barnacles are notorious for just latching on massive stuff. If it were on a log, it's not really doing any harm, but sometimes they latch onto places where they shouldn't really be. You might see barnacles attached to ships. Kasi meron talaga mga nagsuscuba dive para lang linisin yung ilalim ng barko. Why? Although it might not be significant significant because the engines of your ships are quite massive and they can really move your ship. Having those barnacles still might contribute slightly to increased drag because the streamlined shape of the ship is kind of gone. This is also one of the problems when we see a lot of barnacles attached to the carapace of sea turtles. They're actually parasites in a way because they actually benefit from hitching a ride on the turtle. When the turtle migrates to different places, that means different food sources for your barnacle. So siya nakikinabang. Pag dumami yung barnacles dun sa shell, bibigat ng bibigat yung shell. Having all of those barnacles on top of the shell makes it lose its hydrodynamic shape, therefore increased drag. For the turtle, it has to expend more energy to carry the additional weight to move through the water. Lepas, these are your goose barnacles. And another one is balanus or your acorn barnacle. Ano ba ba sinabi ng barnacles dun sa mga estudyante ng Bio 116 na sobrang nawiwi lang na sa ginamit-gamit ng mga araw nila? Sabi ni Goose Barnacle, Di bali, 
Lelepas. Sabi naman ni Acorn Blanco, bahala na si Batman. <laughs> Ayoko na! Oh, please, please stop making these jokes. When we talk crustacean, we're probably talking about the members of class Malcolm Strata. Their defining features, it's all up there. Pay attention to the fact that they do have abdominal appendages. Brachiopoda, Copepoda, and Cirripedia, they don't have abdominal appendages. Some of them don't even have an abdomen. Malacostraca, alam mo may abdomen, and may appendages pa yung abdomen. These abdominal appendages are called pleopods. The last segment of your Malacostraca, the appendages there kind of flatten out into what we call uropods. The thoracic appendages are called thoracopods, and thoracopods can appear in a few basic types. They can either be chelipeds or periopods, depending on their function. Here are a few representative orders under class Molluscostraca: sandhoppers, pill bugs, mantis shrimp, and seafood, and, and decapods. Amphipoda and isopoda do not have a carapace. From the name amphi, which means different, periopods look very different. In fact, there is a particular pair of pereopods called binathopods. Also means equal, where pereopods kind of all look the same. Amphipods are also flattened like this, whereas isopods are flattened like this. And kung titignan nyo rin ang isopods, they kind of look like they just have one pair of antennae, but that's not true. The other pair is just really small, but if you take a closer look, then you might see it. Now, how about stomatopods and decapods? They both have the carapace that kind of covers their cephalothorax. For stomatopods, ito yung tinatawag natin, mantis shrimp. Sa Tagalog, itik. The second pair of maxillipeds are raptorial. They actually use this to hunt prey. Pah! They have some of the fastest, like lightning speed punches. Mantis shrimp can be broadly grouped based on how they kick ass. Meron tinatawag na smashers, meron ding spearers. Kung ayun yun na smash and spear, punchers and piercers. Either way, SS or PP. Decapods, obvious naman, they have 10 periopods. The first, either one to three pairs, can actually have claws. In that case, they are now called Kilopeds. What you see here are some of the crustaceans with an economic importance in that we actually eat them. Seafood. You see the food? Lobsters. Tempura. I mean shrimp. Crabs. Mud lobster. The one that really stands out the most would be the representatives of Brachiura. Your crabs. Brachy means kind of short. Ura means tail. Yun yung tinutoklak ninyo kapag kumakain kayo ng crab. Yun na lang yung pinaka natira dun sa meaning. That's also how you differentiate males and females based on the morphology of those abdominal segments. Yan yung mga pwede ninyong makita kapag kayo ay naglalakad sa may pampang, hermit crabs, ghost crabs. If you're in places na medyo mabato, you might see grapsus crabs. They are actually very important to the ecosystems in which they are part of. Brachypodons, copepods, they're part of the zooplankton community. Cirripedes are filter feeders that kind of clean the crap out of the ocean. A lot of these crustaceans, in a hipon, lobster, alimango, ano ba mga Ito yung mga tinatawag natin mga janitor yung magbigay tugay po tayo sa mga tagalinis po ng ating dagat. They eat crab and we eat them. Kaya alam nyo na bakit masarap ang tempura. The learning does not end with me. It starts with you. If you want to know more, don't let me stop you. You can always check your main reference. All the details are in there. And what I give you now is just a sneak peek into what you expect to see in crustacean diversity. There's a lot of other stuff here that you can watch. And I will see you next time on insects. Babu!